This is Algebra 1, Semester 2. It's a unit called Inequalities Review, and it's Unit 6. It's a lesson called Absolute Value Inequalities Practice, which is lesson number 7 within unit number 6. It's on creatormath.com under the Algebra 1 tab. You might have to Google creatormath.weebly.com to find the site. The instructions are copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages from creatormath.com. So I do try to show you those notes because they can be hard to find. Here's the site name, creatormath.weebly.com. If you Google that, you should get to this home page, hopefully. And if you have any questions on the composition book, which students often do, scroll down until you see the words composition book. Please read all of those instructions, watch all the videos, adhere to the due dates, and put everything on the correct pages according to the instructions, including the notes, which if we go to the class tab now, we'll find five things. The notes, the practice sets, the video like we're making now of the practice sets, the page numbers on which the notes go, and of course the vocabulary practice PDF, which is downloadable to your device and is searchable. Just Google how do I search a PDF uh, with whatever type of device you're using and follow those directions because it's a little bit different per device. So I always ask students, if you're not getting 100% on your vocabulary practices, maybe you don't know that there is a PDF you can download and it is searchable. The point of those is to get 100%. So now you're going to the semester involved. This is the one we're looking at here. Please be careful because the table of contents is different per semester. This is the one we are in semester two right now. The table of contents is very important. So important I ask you to copy it onto pages two through six of your composition book if you haven't done that already. Please stop what you're doing now and get that done. Why is that so important? Because the page numbers of everything that goes in the comp book for the entire semester is so shown on that table of contents. All right, with that, let's find the unit we're in. This one is inequalities review right here. That's the unit. These are all the lessons within it. We're down on lesson number seven. This is called absolute value inequalities. Here are the page numbers on which the notes go. Please don't take this video's word for it, but go back and find the original table of contents. At the time you're viewing this, these page numbers probably will be different. So um, here will be linked the notes. It's not right now, but it will be by the time you see this. Here will be linked the problems, which are linked right now, which we're going to go over. And then the video, if it works out, will be linked right here under Video Solutions. Okay. With that said, let's roll through this. They give us a review set of problems every time. We've done it a bunch of times, so I'm going to go fast. What is this symbol? Greater than. What is this symbol? Less than. What is this symbol right here? Greater than or equal to a compound symbol. Two things at the same time. What's this symbol? Less than or equal to, two things at the same time. And on a number line, what does an open dot mean? An open dot means the value is excluded. That's the opposite of included. On a number line, what does a solid dot mean? It means the value is included. Given set notation, uh, there is the mimic of the open dot and closed dot. A parenthesis is the open dot. It means the value is excluded. A solid dot means the value is included. And a bracket in set notation means the value is included. We'll show that again. It's been on prior lessons, but we'll do it again here in a minute when we solve the problems we're working on. How do you say this? This is positive infinity. How do you say this? This is negative infinity. If you have a number line, typically horizontal is the way we learn number lines. There's a zero in the middle. Off to the right is positive infinity, up forever. And off to the left is negative infinity, down forever, right? Or increasingly large negative numbers. Is infinity a number? No, infinity is a concept, right? So. Um, infinity is the concept that numbers either increase or decrease in the form of negative infinity forever. So um, pick any number like, you know, 50 billion. That's very large, right? But that is not infinity. Infinity, you know, could go up to the higher number. Now 100 billion. Well, that's larger, but it's not infinity. Infinity is the idea that numbers increase forever. And if it's negative numbers, then they would be increasingly large in a negative fashion forever, right? It's a concept not a number. And therefore, when we do set notation, we cannot include the value. We cannot use a bracket on infinity. 
All right, with that said, let's go and look at our first inequality here. Now, these are absolute values. So the absolute value of a number, let's say it's negative 5. Absolute value of a negative number is the distance on the number line from 0. Okay, so here we have 0. Here we have, here we have 0. Here we have negative 5. I know it's negative, but what is the actual distance? The distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the distance is 5. Distances are always positive. They're not negative. It's direction that's negative to the left on a number line is negative. All right, so that's what we're doing here. When we solve an absolute value inequality, we must set up two inequalities. One is x minus 5 is less than 3. So that's exactly like what we see here with dropping the absolute value signs. And then the other one is x minus 5. Um, and we switch the sign and switch the sign, OK? So we flip the inequality, and we switch the sign of the value to the right of the inequality. All right, so now let's go ahead and solve. We do plus 5 plus 5. x is less than 8. That's one value. And then we do another plus 5 plus 5. So we have x is greater than 5 minus 3 is 2. So two things. x is greater than 2, and x is less than 5. How do you write this in a compound fashion? Since x is greater than, we put the 2 here, which means x is less, or 2 is less than x, right? We flip this. And we keep this less than 8 here. So x is greater than 2, just like we said here, and x is less than 8, just like we said here. This is a compound fashion. And now we can show the set notation. The set notation is it's not including the 2 because there's no equals. It's not including the 8 because there's new, no equals. So we're going to use a parentheses 2, comma 8 to show set notation. So the parentheses is used to represent the open dot or the non-equals in this case. So we have x is between 2 and 8, and it's 2, comma 8 in set notation. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next one. The next one is 4x minus 6 is less than or equal to 6. That's good. Now we must model it the other way, too, to take into account the absolute value because we don't know the value of what this is inside of the absolute value. So we're going to flip the sign and flip the sign. Two things. So instead of less than or equal to, we flipped it to greater than or equal, equal to. Instead of a positive 6, we flipped it to negative 6. So we have plus 6 plus 6. 4x is greater than or equal to 0. That's interesting. And divide both sides by 4. And x is greater than or equal to 0. So our x, so here we go here. We go plus a 6 on both sides. Okay. 4x is less than or equal to 12. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. And we get x is less than or equal to 3. So x is greater than or equal to 0. So if we rewrite this, greater than or equal to 0. So show, read it from the right to left. x is greater than or equal to 0. And going back this way, x is less than or equal to 3. And we do have less than or equal to in both cases. That means the values are included. So we're going to use a bracket 0, comma 3 bracket because that represents the solid dot or the equals. So we have x is greater than or equal to 0 here. x is less than or equal to 3. And the bracket 0, comma 3, this represents the set notation. All right, let's do one more. Let's go over here. 4x minus 2 is less than or equal to 14. That's just like it's written, but we drop the absolute value. Let's go over here. Draw uh, right out the left side just as it is. Flip the sign and flip the sign. Okay, so we flipped the inequality from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. And we flipped the sign from positive 14 to negative 14. Add 2 to both sides. 4x is greater than or equal to negative 14 plus 2 is negative 12. Divide by 4 on both sides. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Add 2 on both sides. 4x is less than or equal to 16. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. x is less than or equal to 4. So we're greater than negative 3. So we have here, there we go. We're greater than or equal to negative 3. So read it. You can read these things forward or backwards, left to right or right to left. I read it this way. It says negative 3 is less than or equal to x. That's fine, just like it did here. Negative 3 is less than or equal to x. Or I can read it this way. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. This one I can keep in the same format. 
Both have equals in, so we're going to use a bracket negative 3, comma, 4 bracket. This is set notation. The bracket says the negative 3 is included and the 4 is included, and the equals say it's included here. This is inequality notation. All right, so what do we have? We have a negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4, and we have a negative 3, 4, both in brackets. All right. Okay, so please make sure you're matching up the title of this video with the practice set you're doing. Otherwise, this isn't going to make much sense. This is Algebra 1, Semester 2. It's a unit called Inequalities Review, number 6. And it's a lesson called Absolute Value Inequalities Practice. And it is uh, lesson number 7. So Unit 6, Lesson 7. All right, it's on creatormath.com under the Algebra 1 tab. And I hope this helps.